We are so thrilled to be partnering with Hinge. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. As you all know, I'm a huge Hinge advocate as I met my partner of almost three years on the app. Even before meeting him, Hinge was always my go-to app because I met more relationship-minded people here and had some great dates. Clearly, I haven't been on the app for a little while, but I re-downloaded it to check out some of the new features. One that stood out to me was the voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me, where your friend can hype you up. Not only does this make the profile creation less daunting, but it's not always easy to see your own green flags. So to test it out, I asked UA some fun prompts to get her take on what I could put if I was dating again. So the first one, how long have we known each other? What was your first impression of me and how has that changed? Julie and I have known each other for almost 10 years. My first impression of Julie was that she's very social, but I've learned that she has a lot more depth to her beyond the social butterfly that she is. My next prompt, what do you think are my green flags? I would say she's deeply loyal. She believes in love, curious mindset, and she is fearlessly ambitious. And then last but not least, what kind of friend am I? Julie is the kind of friend who will always have your back, no matter what. Damn, that feels nice to hear. So download Hinge and try voice prompts today. Then find some one worth deleting the app for. The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. I'm your host, Yue Xu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. You'll also hear from my co-host and producer, Julie Kraftchik, as we explore this crazy dateable world. Hello, friends. Welcome to Brunch Talk by the Dateable Podcast. We are you and Julie, and we not only bring you brunch, but we also bring you the talk part of brunch, which is talking about dating, <laughs> dating problems. Actually, we don't bring you brunch at all because you're eating that on your own. <laughs> That's true. But we talk about brunch. So yes, there we go. We sort of bring you the idea of brunch. We give you the idea of brunch. This is like the locale way of brunching because you're not oh eating my anything. God. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be like a future diet fad. It's oh my about god! Thinking about food and talking about okay, food, that's but not, not actually consuming the food. That's not what I meant. That's a recipe for an eating disorder. But yes, you're with us. Maybe you're eating. That's great if you are. No one loves food more than I do, so I'm all for eating great brunches. And I shouldn't say that. A lot of people love food more than I do, but <laughs> I love food. I'll say. I'll leave it at that. I was like, that is not a correct statement. But anyways, we are excited to dish it out with you all. That's what we do best. That's what we do best. Should we just get into the question? I feel like we could talk about brunch all day, but you know, let's get into the good stuff. Brunch all day. That's a menu. Brunch all day. All right. The question is, should I follow the person I've been dating on Instagram? More details that we got. I went on two dates with this girl and really like her. Wondering what's the right protocol for following her on social media. If I follow her now, will she take it to me and I'm interested or just creepy? The times of Instagram dating. I'm so glad I never had to deal with this when I was dating in my 20s because it gets a little complicated. I still remember we had a conversation with Harrison. He was our yep. resident younger dater in his 20s. And he was telling us that the first step was always following each other on Instagram after dating apps. You like you go from dating apps to Instagram. Yeah. Or Snapchat I, at the time. <laughs> Oh, but, okay, but you dated in your 30s. I don't think this is age agnostic is what I'm hearing now is people do this no matter how old they are. I guess for me, personal opinion, I never swiped on profiles that had Instagram linked. I just, mm -hmm. I actually don't like, it doesn't bring me joy to see someone's Instagram linked and I don't care. Surely I stalk them, but I don't need to follow <laughs> them. But it's not about me. It's about you, the listener. <laughs> to get to the bottom of your question is that when should you or should you follow the person you're seeing? I, again, think it's a conversation between you and the person you've been seeing. Some people are weird about that. Some people are trying to collect all the followers. Maybe it's just, hey, I see your Instagram. I mean, should we follow each other? What do you think about that? And have a conversation about it instead of trying to like guess if she's going to be okay with it because you never know. You know, I'm so mixed on this one. <laughs> so many opinions on this one. It's so mixed. I personally, if you're 
interested in this person for your own sanity would recommend not following them quite yet. Two dates is not that long. And I think the reality is there is a big difference, it's gonna sound weird, but between Instagram and reality, right? Mm -hmm. And you only are going to see one angle of things and you're not gonna know what's actually happening. Especially in these early stages, like we know there's a lot of stories that people start to make in their head about what's going on with this person. Person, yeah. If you don't hear back from someone within an hour, let's say you text them, then you go on social media and you see something. Let's say you see that they're at some concert. You don't know if they actually were there like a day ago or they're posting it real time, but you're going to infer that they're like ignoring you mm-hmm. because of this or make excuse that they're not ignoring you if you think that that's what they're doing. You're basically just like, you're not letting the story unfold. Like you're making a lot of these assumptions that you know this person more than you actually do. And I think that actually can be really detrimental for a budding relationship, in my opinion. I've been there before. I remember my most serious ex, he added me on Facebook. This is a long time ago when Instagram (laughs) wasn't a thing or less of a thing. And he wasn't even a big Facebook user. But what happened was, I mean, we had met in person that we went on one date and then he added me or no he actually even added me before we went on the date we had the he date like, set up yes so we had the oh. date set up but he added me before that because we'd met in person like at a group gathering so anyways we had a date set up it was the day before valentine's day and he canceled that day and basically was like let's reschedule this and at the time i was like oh okay like never a good thing but because he was like let's reschedule it Okay. The mm-hmm. next day, I see a girl check in right, him and her right. to like this wine event and was like, Happy Valentine's Day. And I'm like, What the fuck? You know, like basically, yeah, like, does this guy so have a girlfriend? I was spiraling, making all these stories. It turns out it's like his best friend that later was not an issue at all, <laughs> like, never romantic connotation. She dated his friend. Like there was nothing there, but because I had no backstory at this point and I couldn't just ask him because it was like, basically like we didn't have this conversation. It was something I was just Mm -hmm. observing on social media. I feel like it would have been really weird if I was like, hey, what is this? You know, I mean, I could have, but it was like one of those situations that I almost wish I just didn't have that data because it wasn't accurate and it caused me to make all these assumptions that ended up not being true at all. Yeah, because you are inferring all of this information and your mind yeah. just naturally fills in the blanks and it never goes well. I feel like the mind never takes you to a place that's a good thing. It's never like, oh, they haven't texted you back. They must be sitting on their couch thinking about you. Like Your right. mind doesn't think that. Your mind's like, they're ga- out there fucking someone else. Listen, I don't think it's ever a good idea to go down the rabbit hole of someone's social media. But sure, curiosity gets to the best of us. And if they have an open account, I'm going to look. I'm definitely going to look. Definitely. (laughs) I had someone I was casually dating say to me, I found your Instagram. I'm about to embark on it. Is there anything (laughs) I should know before I do this? And I appreciated that because I was like, oh, you may see some pictures with this ex. We talked about that, opened up that conversation. Then I was like, have at it. And then a few hours later, he came back. He's like, what was this picture from? It felt like more of a, we were involved in the internet stalking, (laughs) which actually made it better because then he wasn't like judging me or making these inferences. Now, Before you follow, I think it's always good to have that conversation or just let her know, I would like to follow you on Instagram. What are your thoughts on that? Obviously, you're going to look. You're going to look. Everyone looks. Everyone looks. And have to. You know, everyone has different opinions on social media, too, and what they care if people see or not. Probably a good indication is someone private or public. That could be like the first pass of how much they care if you're seeing it. I'm just thinking about it. We've talked to a lot of daters recently that went on one or two dates things fizzle out as a lot of times they do. And now they've got this person always looking at their stories. Oh my God. And it's like the graveyard of 
Tex is now the graveyard on Instagram, too. And I think you ultimately need to ask yourself, like, do I want this person that I barely know knowing my life? And that's a personal decision. Some of you use social media for different things. Some of you barely use it. Some people don't give a fuck. Like, that's up to you. Personally, for me, I would not want this rando that I, especially if I like them and then they just, like, ghost to me. Yeah. I don't need them looking at my Instagram. Like, why? No. I know we hear that from so many daters who say, oh, yeah, we went on a few dates and now we're just Instagram friends. I'm sorry. You're not, you're not friends. You're not friends. No. If that person doesn't want to hang out in real life, they are not your friend. You're not friends. <laughs> Just because you, oh, they respond, they give you an emoji for your stories. That's not a friend. That's an audience member. And that's not a real person in your life. So stop thinking about that as like a connection of some sort. Yeah. Who wants that? You also need to think about your own mental health. That's kind of what I was saying at the beginning of like, what stories are you going to say, especially in those fragile early days where you just don't really know where things are going. But then let's say the decision has been made, like we're not going to date. Then do you want to be constantly looking at this person? Because we already established that curiosity kills the cat here. There's no way you're not going to look at their story if you're interested and you're following them. There's absolutely no way. It's like, do you even want to put yourself through that mind fuck phase? basically. Yeah. Oh, it's so awkward. It's so (laughs) awkward. And when you have a public account, I mean, you really have no control over who follows you. You can't exactly like remove this person. I guess you can block them from seeing your stuff. So yes, that is one way. But the Facebook thing is actually pretty interesting. I think I've only had one guy that I casually dated who added me on Facebook. He's still a Facebook friend. And I never knew what to do with this because we went on two dates. Nothing happened. And now it's like, do I unfriend him? Do I look at his post? Do I interact with him? I don't know what to do with this person. So I kind of just muted his stuff because he might as well not even be a Facebook friend at this point. I was just thinking, remember that guy that you caught for me, the ghost? Yes. For all the people that missed the story, I basically yes. like had this hot and heavy dates lined up. The guy goes completely MIA. UA finds him on Bumble to try to set him up, but he didn't take the bait. But I believe we're still connected on LinkedIn. I need to like go in there and oh, linked in. <laughs> I feel like that's even worse. Like why? 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 This is the problem. It's just like this graveyard people that you forget about it, that something reminds you and you're like, oh yeah, this person now has a snapshot into my life. And again, everyone has different thresholds of how much they care about this stuff. We're in the age of the internet where essentially nothing is private anymore. So you need to decide for you what your lines are on privacy. But before we get into more, let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by Via. We all know there are things that can help set the mood in the bedroom, but did you know a little THC could also do that? Yes, Via has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. This gummy, wow, it will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I've been pleasantly surprised by the High Love gummies because it It is just the right amount of THC for me to have a good time without feeling sleepy. And hey, if THC is not your thing, Via also offers a wide array of other gummies without it. And everything legally ships in 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. So if you're over 21, you can get 15% off and a free pack of award-winning Dreams THC plus CBN sleep gummies with our exclusive code DATABLE at ViaHemp.com. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Let the gum work their magic. Head to viahemp.com and use the code DATABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their sleepy dream gummies. That's viahemp.com and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. As you know, I recently left my corporate job and I've been in total recovery mode all about self-care. One of my new routines is the nighttime shower before bed. There's just something about washing away the day and that reflection that's been super helpful for me. I've been using one of our partners, Osea's Mega Moisture Duo. This combo body oil and body lotion are so freaking incredible. It literally feels like I'm at a spa. I realize that the secret is seaweed and other skin level ingredients 
that are normally reserved for face products. And that's why I was so excited when Osea became one of our partners. And, you know, we're so grateful for partners like this because one, they keep the show going, but they're also super good for all of our listeners and for our own well-being. So if you want to have that nighttime bliss like I am doing, you can get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATABLE at OseaMalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. So head to OseaMalibu.com and use the code DATABLE for 10% off. Let us know which products you end up going with, share them in social. Super excited to see what you end up choosing. This episode is made possible by Armoire. Armoire makes getting dressed easy. With a clothing rental membership from Armoire, build the perfect wardrobe with brands that are high quality, unique, and recommended just for you. All you have to do is take a five-minute style quiz and select items from your dynamic, personalized closet. The styles show up at your door in as little as two days. Then when you're ready for new clothes, just swap them out. Listen, I live in Southern California. There is absolutely no need for puffer coats or any sort of those winter jackets. But when I travel anywhere else in the world in these cold months, I'm off often burdened with the task of getting winter clothes. And now with Armoire, I can just rent my winter wardrobe. It's brilliant. Right now, our listeners can give Armoire a try and get up to 50% off their first month. That's up to $125 off. Just visit armoire.style slash datable. That is armoire.style spelled A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E to get up to 50% off your first month and never worry about what to wear again. Try armoire today. So I want to turn this convo. Do you think there's any benefits of adding someone early? No. (laughs) No, I really don't. I really don't. Because if you're really in the early getting to know each other stages of a relationship, it's so much better to get to know each other in real life instead of looking at photos or inferring from posts. So no, you? I think that I can see one, but I love that you're just like, nope, I can't see any. (laughs) And this may or may not be a benefit. So let me know your thoughts. I did think like when my ex did add me, it made me really happy. Like it made me feel like, oh, this person Mm. is interested in pursuing something more. It was like another data point. If he had just added me and didn't ask me out, I would have been like, this is weird. But because he was like asking me out and adding me, it made it feel like, okay, this person's like interested in pursuing this and Mm. like making this someone that's like in their orbit, right? Again, you have no idea what someone's worldview is on social media could mean absolutely nothing to them. But the way I interpreted at the time was that and I knew he wasn't like a huge social media person either. So it kind of felt good in that regard. Mm -hmm. It also did give some intimacy, whether it was false intimacy. Yes, you could argue that but you feel like you know a little more about this person. So Mm -hmm. you kind of can cut some of the date talk and you're not using that time to have that you can get into some of the more things that are going to connect you a bit more. So I'd say those are the only things I can kind of see as positive. Would the spiral I (laughs) endured actually account for those positives? Probably not. But There are some I can see. Yeah, I guess before the internet, it'd be the equivalent of you going on a date and bringing your photo albums. (laughs) That'd be hilarious. And going... When I was in college, here's what I wore and here's how I was, which would be kind of interesting. I'm sure people would have loved that in early dating and like looking through each other's photo albums. So maybe it's the equivalent of that. Whether you're following someone on social media or not, it's still about keeping that communication open and not trying to read their mind or inferring or filling in the blanks. And if you can control yourself and to understand that it's an open conversation, after your discovery process on social media, I think that's probably the healthiest place to be. And back to like the original question of will this person like it or think it's creepy? I think that needs to be a conversation you two have. And you can have that very easily just like, hey, you know, it's such the norm this day and age that people add each other on social media. What do you think about that? Yeah. You know, just throw it out as a topic. Or I was listening to this podcast the other day (laughs) where they talked about it. You know, like there's so many ways to tease that in. Even just understanding their own relationship with social media. Are they private? Do they have a big following? Do they log 
log in once every six months versus every day. Like all this is different in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So like, how do you just get to know that? And some of that stuff you can observe by looking, but some of it you really don't know unless you just talk to the person. You really just have to talk to this person. I do appreciate, I actually something else just jogged my memory. Remember the photographer slash chemist that I dated or went on one date and gave him a bloody nose? Yeah. That I was going to say, I don't remember who that is. But then when you said that part, I'm like, yep, nose. now I know. Yep. That part I remembered. Photographer slash chemist. I had no idea who you were talking about. Oh, yeah. I guess I never <laughs> told you what he did for a living. No, I think you did. I just forgot. Yeah, it was just the not, bloody nose stuck with me. It's not the label we used for him. Yeah. <laughs> the bloody nose was, was the guy... And it's a longer story, so you can dig back through previous episodes to hear that one. It's pretty uh-huh. hilarious. But he is a chemist by day and photographer by night. And when we were on our pseudo date, he said, well, you'll probably go on Instagram and find me. But hmm. just so you know, my account is all the photographs I take. Oh, So he pulled up his Instagram because he does nudes. He does artistic oh, nudes shit. of women. So his entire account is nudes naked women. He needs to get ahead of that. Yeah. Yes. He needs to get so ahead So I of totally that. <laughs> understood why he had to do that. But he's like, feel free to follow. But just so you know, this is what I do. He's like, but this is kind of like my other job and I'm not going to hide it from you. <laughs> so I, I, I did, did not that. know this about Bloody Nose Sky. <laughs> I feel like that way to bit the story, but then it got overshadowed by the bigger story and it just got lost. But for anyone that wants to go back, Rock Bottom was the episode. Oh, yeah. And it was season seven, Rock Bottom, where we talked about our rock bottom, the stories that we were oh, like, good job. so humiliated that they happened. And good how job. that made us change how we date. So that's a good one for anyone. Good job. <laughs> I was actually really glad that we were connected on Instagram because years later, remember I told yes. you this? Yeah, you Cause I, reached out I to him, like, right? I reached out to him to apologize for what happened that night because I was a fucking drunken mess. I was such a hot mess. <laughs> That was his first Tinder day ever. And it happened to be me after six hours of drinking. And it was not a good, it was not a good night. I gave him a bloody nose. You can go read all about it in season seven. But years later, I wanted to reach out to him and just apologize for that night. Mm-hmm. And he he's like, I don't even remember. I don't even remember that happening. I'm like, oh great. <laughs> it was that memorable for you, was it? Yay, there's closure right there. You're like, I guess I didn't have to be worrying about this. <laughs> I definitely have reconnected with people also that I've... Okay, you could argue this is a good or bad thing. Like, I've removed their phone number, they've removed my phone number, and the only path was basically social media. Mm-hmm. Whether that's someone you probably should be connecting with, that's another story. Yeah. So... Yes. <sighs> social media. You know, it's one of those things that we, I know it's funny, we start off like, I'm glad we didn't date in our 20s, but I really think this is everyone now. It's just the world that we're in. So we're hearing this, like, I think, of course, it's going to be skewed a little depending on age, but this is something that comes up all the time and people will add you before you even meet in some cases. Like there's all sorts of different yeah. behavior with it. For you, it's really just checking in with what does social media mean to me? It might mean nothing, or it might be like my whole life is on there. You need to decide what comfort level you have. Remembering this is a stranger. This is something that could fall apart at any minute, especially in these early stages. Personally, I think until you DTR or have some sort of semblance of this is a relationship, this is all in rocky terrain that you may never see this person again. Yep. So at this stage, like, do you want this person seeing years and years of your life? That's the question for you. And also, is it going to be good for my mental health to see their years and years of their life? And just to clarify, it's not about age. I think it's about when I was dating in my 20s, there was no Instagram. So I'm happy right. that when I was dating in my 20s, there was no Instagram. And thinking back, I was like, how did I do it? I just went into dates not knowing anything about anybody. How wild, how dangerous, how could I do that? But yeah, that's what we did. We took a gamble. We met people yeah. online at the uh, time. And then you had no follow-up to dig up more information. There was no LinkedIn at the time. Maybe you can go on Facebook, but a lot people have private Facebook accounts. Oh, they're MySpace. You might have found their MySpace and maybe found some photos there, but that was the extent of it. 
Okay, like, yes, I agree with you. When we did in our 20s, it was not existent. But in our 30s, Instagram existed. And we were both Mm -hmm. dating in our 30s. It just wasn't as prevalent, I don't think, as it is even now. You didn't see it in profiles as much. It existed, though. People exchange Instagram handles faster than they exchange phone numbers these days. Yeah. It's definitely skyrocketed in just prominence that's for sure yeah i think people think it's less intimate than phone number it's like like, you do you at the end of the day like it's all about your relationship to it if you really believe it's less intimate go for it it isn't it isn't it's like yes they don't have your phone number but with your phone number what do they really have i don't know it depends how you look at it so everyone's different but ultimately just know what's coming from it and do you need this person in your life after the fact and if you do get in a relationship there'll be many many opportunities to add them (laughs) on instagram yeah i hope (laughs) unless your partner's like i know a couple that she did not want her husband to add her on instagram she had a private account and well they're no longer married so that i was like that doesn't seem like a good sign (laughs) (laughs) but she kept saying she told him for years they were married for like 15 years I just want to keep my life private with, you know, what I do with my girlfriends and when I hang out with my girlfriends. Yeah. And he just, he was like, cool, that's all right. You do you. You have your separate life. I never knew what was on this private account. I was more on the husband side of things. And uh, years later, they got divorced and it turned out that she had this completely separate life in Miami and other relationships. So... Look, yeah. I'm all for privacy, but this feels like if you're sharing a life with someone, you don't need a private Instagram account. Yeah, That's you're so married. wild. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like my type is people that don't like social media. That has Me been too. the last three boyfriends I've had. And I love it. Love it. Me too. I love it when I go on their Instagram. It's like the last post from 2016. I'm like, yes. Right. I'm in love with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you never okay. post. Well, hopefully this was helpful. There's still a lot for you to decide on your own. We're never going to prescribe the perfect solution for you because yes. everyone views it differently. But hopefully this gives you a nuanced look into some of the pros and cons. And thank you listeners for sending in these questions. You can email us your questions, hello at datablepodcast.com or DM us on Instagram <laughs> at datablepodcast. <laughs> oh, how perfect. How, how fitting. <laughs> Anyways. Have a great rest of the week, and we'll see you next week for brunch. Bye. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Want to continue the conversation? First, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at Dateable Podcast. Tag us in any post with the hashtag stay dateable and trust us, we look at all of those posts. Then head over to our website, datablepodcast.com. There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching service with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We're also downloadable for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher Radio, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable. Mm-hmm.